Welcome back to part 4 of this tutorial series on implementing Knearest Neighbor in Python. So in our last video we took our CSV data file and we converted it into a two NumPy arrays. One of the arrays, this lowercase y array, just consisted of all of the class values for each of the data instances and then this capital or uppercase x array uh, consisted of the attributes which described each data instance. So what we're going to do now is we're going to get started by importing SK uh, by installing sklearn and then splitting our data into test data and training data. So I'm going to close this quickly. Uh, let's and we're going to come to the command line. Uh, whether you're on Windows or Mac it should all be the same because we're just using the pip installer so go to your command prompt and we're just going to do scikit-learn like this this will install everything we're going to need over this series so let's wait for that then we're going to go back to our uh, Python file I'm going to bring it over to the right hand side like that and make sure everyone can see what's going on. I'll go one smaller. And we're going to now define four more NumPy arrays. And that's going to be our training and test data. So let's get started. It's going to actually first what we need to do, of course, is we're going to from uh, sklearn.model selection, we need to do we're going to import something called train test split. Now this is a wonderful function that will actually take the, our data sets here and turn it into training data and testing data. So we're going to define four variables here and these are going to be numpy arrays. So x train, x test and y train and y test. And we're going to say that's going to be equal to train test split and inside here we're going to give it our x attributes and our y classes and on top of that we need to define how big do we want our test size to actually be and we want most of our data to be training data right so we're just going to say uh, one third of the data is going to be for testing and then two thirds is going to be for training and then the other parameter we need to really do is this random state and everyone seems to use the the value 42 for no particular reason but what random state does for us is it makes sure that every time we execute the script it will choose the same values for training and testing uh, if you left that blank then every time you ran this program it would use completely it would completely change the outcome by using different array elements for the training data and the test data right so we can now print all of these. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to print x train x test because I want you guys to develop an intuition about what it is we're doing. So I'm just going to show you because that's the best way. And y test. And we're going to execute this script. And what we're going to see here is this is our y training data because it was the last thing that we printed and we can see this is definitely smaller than this so this should be a third of our class values so it's just a single array and then this is our y training data so these are going to be all the class labels that we're going to be training with and then same again here we've got our That's our training, that's our test data. So that's a fairly small array and it's holding all the X attributes that we're going to be uh, testing, sorry, our test data. So what, what, what we're basically saying is our program is going to get these values and it's going to, based on these values, it's going to try and match it with the correct class down here, the, the test data. And then this X test data is what we're going to be training our program on. Our Kenya's name for program. So I think that's fairly 
straightforward, hopefully. If you have any questions about that, then leave a comment, of course. Um, and of course, what's great as well, before I just go, is we have the Y test data and the X test data labels available for us. So once we've actually implemented our KNN program, then we're actually going to be able to test its accuracy because we already know if the values are right or wrong uh, based on this on Y test and X test, we'll be able to validate our data. So leave a like and subscribe and I shall see you in the next video.